The Messages and Unit Settings allows users to customize various system preferences. These include map page settings for the built-in moving map display, various lighting and screen settings, nearest airport search criteria, CDI scale settings, magnetic variation, and input-output settings. To access the Settings and Customization submenu, press and hold the Message key for two seconds. The Map Setup page should appear as shown here. To edit the items on the page, press the cursor key twice so that the first field is highlighted. The smaller inner knob is used to change the values of the highlighted field, while the larger outer knob is used to move between fields on the page. If there are more fields available than can be displayed on the screen at any given time, a small arrow will appear on the lower right of the screen showing which way to scroll for more information. Scrolling up and down is accomplished with the large knob. The first map setup field allows the user to set the orientation of the moving map display. The top of the map display can be set to north up, track up, or desired track up. The automatic zoom feature will automatically adjust the map display scale during your flight. Starting at an end route scale of 300 nautical miles, the scale of the map will adjust to each lower scale, stopping at a scale of 1 nautical mile as you approach your destination waypoint. You can turn this function on or off in this field. The remaining options on the map setup page allow you to control when various waypoint types and their associated identifiers are included on the map display. Airspace display settings can also be specified here. This function helps you to manage the clutter by limiting what is drawn at various map scales. For each type of waypoint, for example an airport, you specify the maximum map scale for that waypoint to appear. You can also disable the waypoint completely by selecting off, in which case it will not be drawn on the map at any scale. For example, an airport scale setting of 300 will display airport symbols on the map for all scales of 300 nautical miles or less. By setting the airport identifier to 30 nautical miles, the identifier will be shown when the map scale is 30 nautical miles or less. Nav aids and user defined waypoints can be set in similar fashion. The Map Setup page also allows you to enable or disable various airspace boundaries on the map depending on the zoom level. This is done in the same way as with the waypoints. When you have finished editing a page group, press the cursor key once. You'll notice that no field is highlighted. Now use a large knob to move to the next group. The CDI settings page allows you to define the scale of the course deviation indicator. You can manually specify the distance associated with a full scale deflection to be 5, 1, or 0.3 of a nautical mile. In the auto setting, the GNC 300 will automatically switch scaling from 5 nautical miles down to 1 nautical mile when within 30 nautical miles of the destination, and then down to 0.3 of a nautical mile at 2 nautical miles from the final approach fix. The Magnetic Variation and Arrival page allows you to define how the GNC 300 determines the magnetic variation. In the Auto mode, all track, course, and heading information will be corrected to the variation computed by the GPS receiver. This is the Normal mode. The True setting will reference all information to True North, while the User setting will apply the specified magnetic variation. The arrival alarm causes the GNC 300 to issue a message when the aircraft is within the specified distance of the destination waypoint or the direct to waypoint. Leave the value at zero to disable arrival messages. When the pilot uses the nearest airport function, the runway length and runway surface type settings entered here will cause the GNC 300 to ignore airports that do not meet the specified criteria. Leave the values set to zero and any, respectively, to include all airports in a nearest search.
The battery saver feature is used to conserve battery power when the GNC 300XL is operating on the optional remote battery pack. The display timeout is set by the user here in seconds. When the display has been timed out, the unit continues functioning normally. The screen will come on when a key is pressed or a knob is turned. The GNC 300XL is equipped with a photocell in the upper left corner of the display bezel. This allows the unit to automatically adjust the display for optimum viewing in just about any condition. Pilot should ensure that the photocell is not inadvertently blocked and that bright light sources are not directed toward it. Manual control of display is available in the event that the automatic feature is not giving the desired results. The contrast field allows the user to control the screen contrast. In the auto mode, the GNC 300XL will automatically adjust the display for ambient lighting conditions. It does a pretty good job. In the manual mode, the user can specify a contrast setting that is suitable. Note that even when the auto mode is selected, the offset level can also be set in the adjacent field to fine tune the auto settings. The mode field allows the user to select one of three display formats. Negative sets the screen display to green characters on a black background. Positive reverses the display to black characters on a green background, and auto uses a positive setting in bright ambient light and negative display for nighttime. Note that when the auto mode is selected, the threshold level at which the display will switch from positive to negative can be adjusted. The backlighting level can be set to auto or manual. In the auto setting, display brightness is controlled using the built in photo cell. Manual control allows the screen brightness level to be set directly regardless of ambient lighting conditions. The GNC 300XL provides an automatic trip timer function that can be configured to start at a specified ground speed or upon power up. Here the timer is set automatically to begin at a speed of 30 knots. The trip timer can be accessed anytime on nav page 2 as we'll discuss in a future episode. The GNC 300XL can be configured to display data in standard or metric units as specified on this page. Position information can be displayed in degrees, minutes, seconds, or degrees and minutes. Altitude information can be in feet or meters. Vertical speed can be in feet per minute, meters per second, or meters per minute. Navigation units can be in nautical miles, statute miles, or kilometers, while fuel can be in gallons, imperial gallons, kilograms pounds, or liters. Pressure can be inches of mercury or millibars, while temperature can be in degrees Fahrenheit or Celsius. The Airspace Alert Settings page allows you to turn the controlled and special use airspace message alerts on or off. When enabled, the GNC 300XL will issue a message when the aircraft is within the specified altitude buffer range of the airspace. In the screen example shown, the buffer is set to 200 feet, though the user can set this value to another value if desired. Note that the other airspace includes alert, caution, danger, training, and warning areas. The map datum page permits users to match the map datum of the GPS to the type of chart being used for navigation. The default setting is a WGS84 map datum, which is what is used on US aeronautical charts. Using a map datum that differs from the chart in use can result in significant differences in position information between the GPS and the map being referenced. The last setup page lets you configure the serial input output for channel 2. Note that serial channel 1 is configured in the installation settings as described in the installation manual. Channel 2 can be set up to output to a mapping device or personal computer with the appropriate Garmin hardware. More information on this and other topics covered in this video can be found in the pilot's guide. To exit the setup submenu group, press any key along the bottom of the GNC 300XL. This completes the presentation on the Garmin GNC 300XL messages and unit settings.